Uh, the FDA has given the green light. Walk us through the implications. Well, they've given the green light, but I'm, I'm actually reading over the statement they've put out now. And I would say that it's highly conscious of the controversy surrounding this drug hmm. um, and the uncertainty of the evidence um, around it. You know, one of the things that the FDA um, said here is that the uh, data in the in the submission for this drug were highly complex and left residual uncertainties regarding the clinical benefit of, uh, of, of Biogen's drug. So, you know, they say that they're going to require Biogen to conduct a post-approval study. Now, those have been surrounded with their own sets of controversy as well, since drug makers can sometimes drag their feet about um, doing them. But I, I think the controversy with this approval is not over just because the FDA has given this, um, this, this green light. Um, and we're going to watch the implications play out in the you know, healthcare finances and mm -hmm. the medical world for the Duke? next months and probably years to come here. Drew, can we take a couple steps back? Sort of, what is the drug? What is it supposed to do? We talk about sort of slowing down the cognitive decline that comes with Alzheimer's, particularly if you catch it earlier. Uh, what's it supposed to do? What are some of the side effects that we know about it, et cetera? Well, you know, we know that, yes, exactly as you say, this is a drug that is meant to be used relatively early in the treatment of Alzheimer's and slow. Now, that, I think that slow word is really important. Slow the cognitive decline. It does not halt it. It does not reverse it. Um, you know, I think there's still a lot of uncertainty about exactly how these drugs work. Um, the side effect profile, you know, when you compare it with the effects of Alzheimer's disease is relatively mild, which is the good news. Um, you know, but it does have some side effects in terms of the development of other drugs and the ability to go ahead with clinical trials when there's an existing therapy on the market. Mm. It has some financial side effects as well, since I think we've heard, you know, pricing in the range of $30,000 uh, a year. And I think it probably has some side effects in terms of how people think about the FDA and how it's going to approach controversial therapies in the future. Hmm. Yeah. The, the, the unmet need is absolutely massive here. Um, Biogen is, is the first to get approval. It's been an incredibly long and difficult journey to get even this far. What does this mean for others, other companies that are going to be moving into this space, other companies that have potential therapies in progress? Talk me through the implications for them. Well, you know, one of the reasons you're seeing biotech stocks trade higher is because anytime there's a controversial decision like this, everybody reads it as saying that, hey, the bar just got a little bit lower for anyone else who's in a space with a lot of unmet medical need and a drug where the evidence may not uh, necessarily be as strong as some would have historically expected. And we've seen this in the past with drugs for muscular dystrophy. Um, we've seen this uh, uh, trend um, happen in cancer before. So I think, you know, if you are a drug developer um, or someone who deals with the FDA, you're going to try to read into, you know, what does this mean for me? And it doesn't mean that my drug has a better chance getting across the line. Um, mm -hmm. I think it will also reset the profile for what it means for other Alzheimer's drugs. It may mean that, hey, you're going to have to do better than this um, in order to get approved. A lot of times, you know, FDA does consider what are the other therapies that are on the market. So it may mean that, you know, if you're developing a competing drug for this, you have to do better than Biogen has done. Mm -hmm. That is not a terribly high bar. Again, I, I think we really have to emphasize the controversy around this data, the uncertainty of some of the evidence, and what I think is going to be an ongoing discussion about whether this drug gets paid for, and even whether it remains on the market as more evidence is collected. Yeah, and I also have to you know, wonder too, it slows it, it doesn't erase it. So you're still kind of heading towards the same result at the end, but I think that becomes a different kind of conversation. Um, we get a headline, Drew, that the FDA is requiring Biogen to conduct a post-approval clinical trial. Um, is, is that normal? What does that mean? You were kind of alluding to something like this. Yeah, that's standard when you have an approval that's granted under these terms. It's called an accelerated approval pathway. Um, the company is supposed to then go out and essentially conduct a additional clinical trial once this drug is on the market. Now, the FDA and the company obviously have other ways of continuing to collect evidence. We've you know, seen this sort of thing happening with COVID vaccines right now. Everybody is watching to mm -hmm. see, even though that they are out there under these emergency authorizations, how do they continue to perform? I think the issue with a lot of these accelerated approval, um, the, the kind of post-approval trials, is that drug makers frequently don't do them. You know, it, is, it ends up being up to the 
drug sponsor to conduct the conduct the trial. And if your drug is out there, it's approved, it's getting used, it's getting paid for. Unsurprisingly, there are a lot of incentives not to necessarily look too hard at something that might end up getting it pulled off the market. And there has been a lot of criticism yep. of these post-approval trials and the FDA's lack of enforcement in terms of saying, hey, it needs to be done by this date or else you're in trouble um, in terms of making sure that those things happen in a timely fashion. Drew, we talk about the, the unserved market here. How big is it? How big a cost is this for the, the US in, in terms of care and health care? Talk to me a little bit about how big the market is. It, it's massive. I mean, you're talking about tens of millions of people in the US. And, you know, from a market perspective, it's it, that's that's huge. I mean, you know, they believe there's projections out there saying this could be a three billion dollar a year drug by 2024 um, from some of the analysts that have, uh, we collect on the Bloomberg terminal. Um, that said, you know, think about the market of human suffering. I I, I have a, a a grandparent now deceased who suffered from um, elderly dementia and, uh, and Alzheimer's. It's tragic. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think people have to really understand. Um, if they don't have someone in their family or close to them who suffered for this disease, the need is massive. It is it is an awful thing to watch someone go through, whether they be a grandparent, a parent, uh, a spouse, a friend. Uh, it is truly a horrific disease that robs people of their minds, and anything that helps is a massive step in the right direction. Yeah. That said, you know, because of that need and because of the desire for this drug, I think it puts a huge number of pressures on the FDA and on drug companies to try and get something, anything that works out there, even if it may not be necessarily to the types of standards of evidence that we have seen from other drugs in other diseases where the therapy classes are more established.